Scott in Tampa. Let's hear from him. Scotty, welcome. Your turn. How are you today, pal? I'm doing very well. Thanks, Dougie. First off, you know I'm a giant fan. I hate the Eagles, but must congratulate Eric from Long Island, who has been calling you for years, and I think he's the only true Eagle fan who calls you, Chris. So kudos to Eric from Long Island. He deserves it. He, de- he deserved that championship. He's been a big fan for a long time. Uh, I think he was at the game, so I'm sure he'll track us today. We'll get a word with him, but uh, yes, he deserves that title, no question about it. Go ahead. Next. Uh, so here's a couple things. First, first on the broadcast, Chris. I mean, I know broadcasters aren't biased, but man, did Chris Collinsworth on those two quote-unquote questionable touchdown calls, could he have been any more on the Patriots side of those calls? I mean, the Zach Ertz one to me is not even close. He was clearly a runner. So I don't know what Collinsworth was talking about on that play. Yeah. I mean, that, that to me was ridiculous. I agree. Now, I, the issue that I have with both Allen and Collinsworth in that sequence is that both calls were called touchdowns on the field. So it had to be the obvious error to overturn both. And both, now listen, the, everybody's all screwed up with these touchdowns with catches. So I understand that. We saw what happened, of course, in the Pittsburgh right. New England game. So it is tricky for a broadcaster. But I thought both would stay. So from that perspective, I, agree, I thought both would stay. Go ahead. I agree. And that's the bigger problem, Chris, is that, you know, it, it's not the what's a catch and what's not. Obviously, that's a problem. If, if you're debating about it, then whatever the call on the field is, keep it. And then the other thing would be, Chris, I think I want to know more about this thing with Malcolm Butler because the two cornerbacks they were playing last night, Rowe and this bottom, bottom EC who missed that big tackle on Aguilar. Yeah, that was a big play for a first down, for a first down, yeah, big play. Yeah, a huge play in the game. You're telling me... Malcolm Butler's not better than those two guys because something else is going on. Because oh, no, we know, no, no, something play. else. No, obviously. I mean, Butler either, you know, he must have went out Saturday night. I mean, that's the rumor that maybe he missed a curfew. He played in ninety-seven point two percent of the Patriots' snaps in the course of the year. You know, Butler did something wrong. Now, I we, until we find out exactly what it was, we're just guessing. But Butler did something wrong. And now, did he miss a curfew? Miss a team plane? I mean, I heard that. This morning, I'm not sure if that's true, but he did something wrong. And that's, I know, for whatever the reason, Belichick has his reasons. Let me say one other thing about the broadcast. Well, two things. One, I don't know if it was me or what, but I thought the ambience, ambience from the tele, from the game to the TV screen did not resonate. It did not sound like it was that loud a building. Now, I'm not there in the building at the time, but I did not get the sense. I know it's a neutral site game. I know both teams' fans are there. I understand that. And I guess much more Eagle fans from what I was told. But the thing I would say is I did not sense the ambiance from the fan, from the stadium to the TV booth. That's the first thing. Second thing is, and I love them, so this is going to be hard to say this, Al's got to stop treating these games like it's, uh, you know, like it's Lions Saints in October on Sunday night. I mean, they haven't won a championship since 1960. Can you find the last call, please, Kali, if you do? But I thought Al, I, I know he's been around forever, but I did not get the sense, you know, Al did a game very workmanlike. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't hear any zip. I didn't hear any. I didn't hear any pep. I didn't hear any energy. I, I mean, I heard a routine broadcast from the great play-by-play guy, and Michaels is on the Mount Rushmore of broadcasting, and that's what I heard. Now, they haven't won a championship since 1960, this team. All right? 1960, Brady's got a ball in the air, not to win, but he's got a ball in the air from midfield uh, with five seconds to go. They haven't won forever, and when we play you the play-by-play cut, you're going gee, you're gonna to say, gee whiz, really? I mean, really, I don't know. Surprising. I I thought that Al did not have the overall pep that I like. And they get all wrapped up uh, on those two plays with the officials. I don't want to kill NBC too much on that because God knows we'd all make the same dopey mistake. But they should have spent more time on fourth and three. That was the play of the game from midfield. And they didn't make a big deal about that play like they should have. That was the play of the football game. There's nothing else that comes close. That's the play of the game. Uh, here's Steve in North Carolina. He's on Mad Dog Unleashed. Steve, good afternoon. How are you today? What do you have? Hey, Chris. How you doing? All right, Steve. I think uh, last night's game was big for the NFL to get fans back. You had an exciting game going back and forth. No controversy with the uh, national anthem. 
The refs let the guys play football. They weren't throwing a lot of flags. The replays that they had, they uh, got the right call. And even on the touchdowns, you didn't have a crazy uh, celebration with guys acting like knuckleheads. A hundred percent right on really all counts. They had the two controversial calls, but they let the touchdown stand. And for all of you out there uh, in the NBA land uh, who are dumb enough, and this includes Cuban, and this includes that Maury, the whatever his name is, the GM of the Rockets who thinks he's invented basketball. Instead, every time you look at Houston in a big game, they lay an egg and they lose by 50. Last year, Golden San Antonio, second round, which I guess the Rockets have yet to find the guts in a big spot to go out there and win a big game, uh, in a real big game. Uh, but uh, I know they won game seven against the Clippers one year, but the Clippers blew that lead more than the Rockets won it. Uh, but the overall theme, the NBA, there's a lot of NBA people who think the NBA, the NFL is on its way to irreverency that nobody's going to care. Well, they had 111 million people watch the game. 111 million people watched the football game. 111 million. That's a third of the uh, United States' population watched that game. Third. The NBA for its all-star game will hit about 5 million. The NBA for its final between Golden State and whomever will have about Game, if there's a Game 7, we'll have around 17, 18. Uh, for a, outside of a Game 7, for a game in that series, about 17, 18 million for an NBA final. The NFL, yes, without even trying, had 110 million people watching it. Yet yeah, somehow, and the NBA, uh, listen, uh, I'm not here to support the NFL. I can kill us, but let's be honest. The NFL just sold a Thursday night TV package of 55 games. Thursday night now. 50, Thursday night, 55 games. They just sold the package for $3 billion. Yet the NBA, Yet the NBA seems to think that the NFL is on its way out. And everybody's going to be bored stiff. They're not playing youth football, so the NFL is on its way out. This is the same NBA that waits until basically they play 80 games, six games to go, and they have their all-star game. Because why? They want to keep away from the NBA, the NFL. So I don't want to hear it. 111 million people watch the game, folks. 111. So what you need to know. Bob in Philly, Mad Dog Unleashed. Robert, good afternoon. How are you today? What do you have for me? Good afternoon, Bobby! <laughs> Bob's a Philly fan. He's all excited as he should be. Doggy, you buried me. I, I thought, um, there's more there are more Eric's out here than uh, your man from Tampa wants to say. I've been with you for 10 years, brother. Come on. All right, well, give me a sense then in Philadelphia right now. Let me hear your take on it. Go ahead. Okay, first of all, Doggy, I didn't want to be negative, but listen, hot my man, get a clue. Because after 56 years, we're not going to be riding Carson if they start out of 3-3. Three and three. Worry about what's going on in St. Louis, Hawk. Not about what we're doing with Wentz. I, I, listen, I, I said the same thing. I, they're not going to boo Wentz if they're 3-3. Three and three. How could you? I agree with that. I mean, Go ahead. Yeah, it's, Chris, it's like with the Giants. It's like it, it, it's a similar thing. Chris, look, I'm with you. And, I, and, and when you were talking to Eric, I, I remember the conversation. And I agreed with you. After Eric said he would be happy just to get to the Super Bowl, and your response was, hey, you guys have had a great year. you got nothing to prove. I was in complete agreement with it. And Brady with the ball with two minutes left, we're, I'm shaking in my boots. There's no doubt about it. And the hand of Brandon Graham, uh, it, it's just, Chris, it's just, you know what it is, Chris? You, I know you're the guy. You love this Philly. You love all sports. In the year – where nobody thought Philly was going to win, especially after Wentz Carson goes down. It's, there's been so many heartaches, Chris. I mean, you know them. Black Friday, Bob Nystrom offside, scores a goal to win the Cup for the Islanders. Uh, the Sixers blow a 2-0 lead to Portland. All these. What's, all Black, these, what's Black Friday? That's when Ozark in game three against the Dodgers. Oh, right, okay. Didn't pull Luzinski out of left field. Yeah, I mean, and he put Jerry Martin in the outfield and uh, he messed the play. Nobody on it and Dick Davalia later. Yeah, a good boy. Bob's a good sports Boston. fan. Yeah, that was terrible. Oh, my God. And, and it's just, Chris, look, we love you in Philly, brother. We, how we about the it's, how about the fan it's, base? How about the fan base last night going a little crazy and uh, burning cars down? What's your take on that? Wait, burning cars down? Well, that's what everybody tells me. Is that true? Did they burn oh, cars? Just like, did they set cars on fire? Chris, I'll be honest with you. I was up till 2.30. I was switching between Comcast and ESPN. The only thing I saw was fireworks going off, and I stayed with it till 2.30. There were crowds at City Hall. Chris, it's been 57 years. There were no cars burning. 
I give you my word, there were no cars burned. All right. So the I, so in other words, then the eagle. I I I, I was maybe I was giving misinformation. So in yeah, other words, then the right. eagle, the eagle fan base acted with great decorum at the end of the game last night. Uh, yes, and according to our mayor, Mayor Kenny, there were there were three arrests reported. Now, three arrests. That's going to happen. No, I, I'll Another give you that. Did. Now, 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 the Eagle fan base did throw rocks and stuff at the Viking team bus last two weeks ago, did they not? Uh, Chris, Chris, I have absolutely, and I can't deny that, Chris, but Chris, please be fair because you know what? I can bring up a lot of situations like, oh, 2006 ALCS where Yankee fans were throwing bottles and baseballs because A-Rod was called out. It happens everywhere, and that wasn't an isolated incident. Giant fans threw snowballs at the Chargers players that one year, so stop saying the Phillies the only people who threw snowballs. I just, not you, but... Now, now, Bob, be fair now. I, was, I, I watched it. They booed the hell out of the Eagles walking off the field at halftime in a Raider game in Week 16. Chris, did they deserve it? I heard, I heard, I heard Eli getting booed this year. They were 13-2 and two at the time, for crying out loud. Or 12-2. and two. Yeah. How do you boo them after off the field without the new quarter, with the new quarterback in there, Bob? You can't defend Chris. that. Okay, and, and one other thing, Chris. Yes, go ahead. If you can, listen to some of Merrill's calls. Because I don't know what. Now, listen, I was watching. He's a great announcer. Merrill Reese, is a, he's been there forever. He's a great announcer. Good yeah. point. Go but ahead. Chris, if you know, but Chris, if you listen to the plays where he calls, the sound is so much louder. It sounds like they're playing it the way. I'd have to do that. Uh, we can play some uh, Reese calls. All I can tell you is on television, the sound did not come across. That's me now. Now, maybe uh, uh, maybe Eddie Erickson or Billy Z have a different feel of it. I didn't sense an incredible amount of juice. Now, uh, it's me in, in the building myself. And I tell you, and I, and I love him. I hate to say this. Al was too way, 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 way. We don't have the play-by-play cut. We'll see if we can find it. But he was way. We played on an MLB network. I couldn't believe it. Way, matter of fact. I mean, way. Al, come on. Little life. Super Bowl. 60 years. Eagles. 14 in front of the hour. Continuing on Mad Dog Unleashed. 